root of every home in our island, in our empire, and indeed throughout the world, except in the abodes of the guilty, goes out to the British airmen, who, undaunted by odds, unwearied in their constant challenge and mortal danger, are turning the tide of the world war by their prowess and by their devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. I hadn't seen anything like it before, and I can see it quite clearly now. As clear as I can see you, climbing up just two of us, and uh, we were told of 150 plus. That's a lot of aeroplanes in those days. And I looked ahead into the distance, and there it was, like a lot of gnats on a summer evening, uh, coming towards us. And my my reaction was, you know, where on earth do we start with this lot? What do we do? And the answer was to go straight in. Back with Britain is now being regarded as one of the iconic battles of history and I think it's quite true to say that had we not won this battle because we did win it the Germans may well have invaded and uh, life in this country and in fact around the world would have been vastly different. I never thought we were going to be beaten because when you're young defeat doesn't sort of enter your mind. I think my family must have been quite horrified to think that their son was had volunteered for, for this, what was obviously a dangerous thing. On the other hand, my father fought in the trenches in the First World War. Uh, he knew what it was all about. And so I think probably a mixture of, of trepidation and, and pride. The papers were showing that uh, clouds were gathering over Central Europe. and. Everybody was talking about uh, what we might have to do to defend ourselves in case something happened. And I noticed that uh, a lot of friends and so on were, were beginning to join up. I, I think my mother was probably rather cut up because she lost her brother at Arras in the First World War. And uh, so she was a bit sensitive about her children uh, uh, joining up. They found out eventually that uh, Dowding or Churchill or somebody had cancelled the postings from the flying training school that were on that day or that week or whatever it was and we were to be sent straight to squadrons because they were getting rather short of pilots after the Dunkirk. Those days you joined as an AC2 which was the lowest rank in the Air Force but because nobody under the rank of sergeant was allowed to fly played, I was made a sergeant the next day. It was about the 9th or 10th of September when we I first saw my first German airplanes and they were fighters from 109s. We went in to attack them, with great excitement and thrill, but unfortunately I don't think I hit anything because it was the first time I fired shots in anger. The first, first time I saw a German aircraft was when uh, we were on a training flight. We climbed up to about 15,000 feet and received a message on the radio to say that there was a bandit in the area. And uh, we were vectored, vectored onto this thing. I'd, I'd never fired the guns on the Spitfire. I, had, I didn't even know how to work the gun sight. That hadn't yet been explained to me. We would uh, intercept German aircraft amounting to about 100, 150, 200 aircraft. And we would look left and right of us and see 11 companions. At which time we all said to ourselves, my God, what are we doing? Uh, where do we start? Well, I think probably the narrowest escape I had was when we went into a cloud of ME-110s, which were twin-engine fighter bombers um, over the south of England. And I went in and opened fire to attack them, and the whole of my engine blew up in front of me. Um, there were no flames or anything, uh, and but I thought I'd been shot. Uh, and so I pulled out of the action glided down, I had no engine or anything like that, and managed to force land. Uh, and I was jolly lucky that the thing didn't burst into flames because um, I wouldn't be here today if it had done. The 
was Keith and his controllers and so on who controlled the battle. So, so the battle was well, it was one at the sharp end by us, but at the back end it was Park and Dowding's planning, uh, pre-war planning and so on, that enabled victory to come our way. Now the miracle of the Battle of Britain was that our system was so good that uh, we were never short of aircraft, and if we finish up at the end of the day with five, we'd be back to full strength by the afternoon of the following day. And it's only in the last 20 odd years that this has come back and the historians have got hold of all the facts and figures and so on. And it is now recognized after 70 years as one of the major battles of history. Together we remember them.